We yield respectfully request the Sangha great virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach and guide us out and birth and death, leave suffering and attain bliss, and quickly realize non-birth. Kung tin dai duk tang tin Vi thư pha hồi cập nhật thiết chúng sanh Tính chiến diệu pháp luân giao đạo ngã mùn Như há liệu sanh thoát tư Lý khổ đạt lạc Tốt chương vô sân Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Nam mô saran thu sư chê đô dê ở la hờ đi san mèo san pu tô xế. Nam mô ta rác tha tô già đa già a la ha đế tam miệu tam bồ đà tóa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million eons is difficult to encounter. Now that I am able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the dust come one's true and actual principles. Wu shang sheng sheng wei miao fa ba hi che wan che nan zao yu wo jin tian wen de shou chi Yen che ru lai cha shi yi. O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Ching Liang, Great Master Shen Hua, O monks and nuns and all good advisors, Amitofo. Chi Phật Bồ Tát, Kinh Thư Thanh Lương, Đại Sư và Thượng Thuyên Hoa, Quý Thầy Cô, và Quý Vị Thịnh Sư Thư Ca Nhi Đạo Phật. Chú Phu Phu Sa Chính Liang Ta Sư Sư Phu Sang Rần Gơ Wei Chú Cha Rần Gơ Wei Sang Chư Sư Vệ Mệnh Tô Phổ. Hello everyone, today is the, oh my, my phone, the 24th of June, 2022. Uh, we are here, uh, gathered here in Wei Mountain Temple to continue discussing the prologue to the Avatamsaka Sutra as written by Master Ching Liang. We are presently on slide uh, uh, number seven of door number two. Okay, welcome all and thank you all for coming. Okay, we're talking about door number two, the stores and teachings containing it. So this is an overview of what this uh, Avatamsaka Sutra is about. And so. Uh, so the great Master Ching Liang discussed the stores. Uh, stores here means um, the three stores. So one store is a Vinaya store. Uh, Vinaya is from Sheila. We went through this uh, the last time. Uh, uh, and uh, we just need to finish this. Uh, this uh, is, uh, uh, this uh, Sheila means uh, heat affliction. So you, you be apart from heating afflictions um, and not only leaving, also being a part of. Uh, so therefore, uh, the Vinaya is about a state of freedom from afflictions. Afflictions create, uh, afflictions create heat. And, and therefore, when you are aware of affliction, you should leave afflictions, okay? You should 
uh, distance yourself from afflictions. It should be apart from afflictions. And, and also, not only is a matter of uh, leaving uh, the afflictions, being separated from the afflictions, you also want to make sure that you uh, stay that way. Mm. Okay, so it takes two parts, where you are naturally are in a state of free of afflictions. When you detect that you're afflicted, because that's going to happen, doesn't matter how pure and calm you are, eventually your karmic obstructions or your neighbors or the Christians will come and harass you. Okay? And therefore, you need to learn how to deal with that. And you, learn, you need to learn how to leave the affliction or distance yourself from the affliction. That's what the precepts are about. Okay? And because of that, uh, you apart from heat affliction, there is a cooling effect, meaning that either you are free from affliction and you are constantly cool, calm, and collected, or uh, your lack of heat, or you learn to reduce the temperature. So it's a very useful skill to have. Okay? In a very desirable state. Eight. Uh, Vinaya store also means pratimoksha. Uh, pratimoksha is Sanskrit, that means separate liberation. Hmm. Separate, meaning that's uh, distinct, it's different from the other, uh, from the others, uh, meaning separate from the other teachings, uh, the teaching is a sutra, the teaching is sastras, the separate teaching. Therefore, it has its own characteristics, it has its own uses, it has its own foundation, it has its own importance, if you will. Okay? If you ignore this, you will uh, be at risk. Okay? So therefore, even you learn Buddhism, you cannot afford to ignore this pratimoksha, because it's a separate, another aspect of, important aspect of the Buddhist teaching. Yes, number seven. Master, are the afflictions like the, um, the, yan, the yan energy, and then the, you said because it, it cools down, so then it's the yin, like the yin and the yang, something like that? No, just not just that. Affliction means that, for example, you get angry. Very, very straightforward affliction, very easy to understand when you angry at someone, your body heats up, okay? Uh, and so the body heating up there, the body's overheating. Imagine that uh, uh, BEV, battery operated electrical vehicle, uh, when your, your electric vehicle, your EV is heated, the battery, you know, uh, it uh, drains a lot quicker. So you lose uh, a lot of energy right there. Okay, so the engineering reflects our beautiful human engineering. Okay, we don't want to have heat in our body. So when we're afflicted, we're losing our effectiveness. Does it make sense? Like just like the EVs. The EVs, when it's too hot, you know, uh, the temper too hot or too cold, uh, it loses effectiveness. Same thing with us. We cannot afford to be heated or too cold. Okay, a very important concept. Mm. And so distinct from the other two, the other two are the studies of the samadhi, studies of wisdom, and it's separate because it teaches you about uh, the, uh, the self-defense, if you will. Hmm? How do you guard your doors? Okay? How do you mount your camera, security camera systems? How do you turn on your alarms? How do you, you know, and so forth. Those are the means that you need to protect yourself. Okay? Uh, so this is self-protection. Uh, so protect yourself against what? Protect yourself against uh, errors. You make mistakes that you don't realize. This is what separates people with wisdom from the people with no wisdom. People with no wisdom 
keep on making mistakes and they drown, they sink by the weight of their own karmas. So for example, because worldly people, they don't know about the Vinaya, the Prati Moksha, and therefore they commit offenses throughout their entire lives. So by the time uh, eventually uh, the karmic weight, the karmic retribution weight is so heavy, they pull them down. That's why by the time ordinary people, they uh, die, they will fall to the lower realms. So that's the difference between Buddhism versus the other non-Buddhist religion in that we stress, uh, we stress, uh, we teach our people in very great details about the uh, pratimoksha, okay, very detailed way to protect yourself, if you will, to guard from errors. What are the errors? Now, Buddha's, in his infinite wisdom, he describes the kind of errors we typically make. Uh, and it's fascinating. To me, I read some of those uh, with the little time I spent reading them, studying them. They are intellectually so stimulating. It's not boring at all. My impression, my first impression of Vinaya, the Pratimoksha, is that it's useless. It's not very useful. How am I going to teach you? How am I going to impress you with, you know, with the rules and regulations? No one likes rules and regulations. And I myself uh, is the one person who do, does not like rules and regulations. So how can I convince people like me? So, but actually, it's so beautiful. Beautiful because it is, it gives you insights or tips into our, our tendencies, our weaknesses, if you will. Our Achilles heels, if you will. It's fascinating. Uh, uh, yes, Daniel. Number two. Um, I have a quick question. So, um, uh, what are the three karmas that they guarding? What uh, what are those three karmas, and what kind of errors are they protecting against? Or guarding okay. against. Okay, Ru Shu. What are the three karmas? In uh, Kong, I I think I said, that's her right there. Uh, her face is so small. Her face is the size of a pin on my on my on my screen, but I can recognize, you know, the aura. <laughs> okay, what are the three karmas? What? We cannot hear Sang Sunim. Come on, Shorty. I mean, okay, Sang Wook Sunim. I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know? <laughs> Say what? I can name you Ru, Shu. So how can you not know? Okay, anyone else in Jewel Kong knows besides the abbot there? What are the three? Okay, send her a slip. You, you guys, Koreans, should help each other. It doesn't sound good. He says, it's my fault. I didn't teach her properly. Is that That's the translation right. says? I've been here, um, it's been two weeks since I came here. I mean, I came here. Um, I didn't come here for the last two weeks. And then uh, for a long time, I came. And then I was so happy that Susie, Master Yunga, and then 
Abbott and then co-cultivator, so I don't have any thought in my mind. She always knows what to say to please us, <laughs> except the answers. Okay, what about the rest of you? Can, you didn't help her at all? I mean, she's so happy to see you. You're not even helping her conk people. Huh? You slide them, you know, in, remember in high school, in school, when, when you stuck, someone is stuck, you slip a piece of paper and say, hey, 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 hey. Okay, here's your chance. What are the three karmas? Oh God, the Koreans, they don't know anything. Uh, the uh, 3업이 어, 말로 하는 업, 말로 짓는 업, 그 다음에 아까 입으로 짓는 거, 그 다음 몸으로 짓는 거, 그 다음에 뜻으로, 그러니까 의식이나 생각으로 짓는 업, 세 가지로 알고 있습니다. So, let, let, let me guess. Make money, drink soju, and have some bulgogi. Is it what she said? She said three karma is um, karma with, uh, with, with uh, talking, speech, karma with body, and karma with thought. Very good. That's what I thought she would say. <laughs> uh, karma is by your mouth. Karma is by your body. Karma is by your mind. What are the karmas of the body? Hmm? Korea, continue. Okay, let's switch to Jumang Temple. <laughs> yeah? What are the karmas of the body? These are fundamental concepts that everyone should know. Otherwise, how could you claim that you are a Buddhist disciple? These are, they are, they are you know, basic you know, concepts, basic Buddhist knowledge. Karmas of the body. 네, she doesn't know either. Oh, killing. That's it? Killing? <laughs> what else do you do with your body? Um, 도둑질이요. 도둑질이요. Stealing. We cannot hear Sangok Sunim. Stealing. Stealing. Excellent. What else? They're looking at each other. Can you see that? You notice that? They say, you go first. No, 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 you go. Umhengi is <laughs> me. Okay, don't translate. Sexual misconduct. Ah, uh -huh. I told you not to translate. Then we have to explain to the Catholic here what is sexual misconduct. Okay, so the karmas of the body are three. Very good. You see, you have you have to twist her arm and she knows but you have to twist this lady's arm it's you commit uh, the karma of stealing of killing and of sexual misconduct okay those are the karmas of the body very very good okay uh, what are the karmas of the mouth excellent okay to avoid the appearance of picking on the Koreans Let's pick on the Wei Mountain Temple here. Yes, what are the karmas of the 
mouth. The mouth could be like uh, lying or um, it could be saying things that uh, actually afflict other people by mostly lying or gossiping. Lying, gossiping, what else you do? Yes, seven. Is one that's like false speech or frivolous false speech? False speech, frivolous speech, what else? Coarse speech, what else? Coarse speech, and also some speech called, referred, that's what the native Indians in America used to accuse the, the, uh, uh, the white people of doing, which is? They say, oh, pale face, double tongue. Did you hear me? Pale face, double tongue. Translate. Was it? Was that mean like being two faced or something? Or double? yeah, double tongue. Pale face. What about pale face? White person on West, <laughs> Westerner, on Caucasian. <laughs> I. You said it. Okay. I. I don't. I. I didn't want to sound discriminatory. But he's a white person who said it. He says, white person, double thumb. <laughs> so what happened is in the, uh, in the Old West, uh, the white people would uh, do trading and business with the Indians who are red skin, or they're called red skins. The red skins were unhappy. They used to accuse the white folks from uh, lying, they make a promise and they lie, or they say things they don't mean. But double tongue actually means more than that. Double, double tongue is ra rather saying party A something to provoke party A to get angry at party B. Then you go to party B to say something to party B to provoke the party B to get angry at party A. So they have conflict between A and B. Okay, that's why double tongue. Double tongue here in Buddhism has a purpose. You create conflict between two people. That's called uh, double speech. Okay? Okay, so those are the karmas of the mouth. The mouth karmas are, again, false speech or lying. So far, so good. Um, fibulous speech, like you are wasting time. You say it's nonsense. For example, you say nonsense to your girlfriend. You know, oh, you're so pretty, you're so wonderful. My heart beats, palpitates. You know, this, you say nonsense, don't you? Okay, so uh, uh, false speech, uh, frivolous speech, okay? Uh, Meaning, you say things that are nonsense. You're wasting time, and you're afflicting others with your nonsense. Okay? Part of which is, by the way, what? Songs. Can you imagine? Yeah. For example, you send someone a, a, a video link of a song. Anyone? Aha, uh -huh, these people. <laughs> Stop doing that. It's frivolous speech because you're wasting people's time. Unless you mean it. Did you mean it? Okay, so it's frivolous speech because you're wasting time. You say, you speak nonsense, you, you do things that waste people's time. Okay? Uh, number three are. Uh, uh, coarse speech, swearing, saying, using abusive language or, or, or uh, swear words, or coarse words, okay? And finally, uh, double tongue. The false speech is you lie, and double tongue is that you incite discord, conflict between two people. And those, by the way, are the tendencies that we have. Isn't that right? So I'm the only one.
Look at that. This is a, if you like that, raise your hand. No one raises his or her hand, so it's just me. I'm still waiting. <laughs> Too late. The polls are closed. Uh, okay, so those are the four karmas of the mouth and of the mind. There are three karmas of the mind. And they are thoughts of greed, thoughts of anger, and thoughts of stupidity. What are thoughts of stupidity? Hmm? Don't believe in Buddhas. <laughs> no? What else are an example of thought of stupidity? Yes, Daniel. Um, to what I heard is maybe it's like um, any thought that arises to your mind. Any thought arises in your mind? No, not quite. The thought that arises in your mind, some are pretty good. Yes, seven. What about um? If someone's not just like you, then they're stupid, or if they're different from you, then... Discriminatory thoughts? Yeah. Shocking. Pale face is so shocking. <laughs> okay. Sangwook uh, Sunim, how did you translate pale face? I want to make sure your compatriots understand what I'm talking about. This is an American joke. Pale? I couldn't translate. You didn't translate pale face? Hey, no. Booth, translate pale face. Pale. So it's just like the, the, the Korean ladies put on the foundation that make them look white. Hmm? Hey, it's not me. Somebody made a comment. Okay? She says, she has foundation? I said, no, no, they, they, they don't do foundation. I said, yeah, for foundation. So, 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 because I came across so stupid, so I didn't believe her. I said, no, 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 they don't do foundation. She, so she asked me, do I wear foundations? I said, no. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Caught again. <laughs> uh, women are so difficult to understand. I don't get it. <laughs> so you know the only one, Daniel. Anyway. Uh, uh, what was it? How do we get into foundation again? Oh, pale face. Pale face. So pale face is a face that's kind of whitish. It doesn't have any color. It's called pale face. OK, translate. 창백한 얼굴. 창백한 얼굴. These are important concepts that you, Koreans, should know. I don't want you to miss out on all the important Buddhist teachings here. Anyway, uh, so stupid, stupidity, okay? Pale face, stupid, I um, mean, uh, yes, five. From Christopher L., thought of stupidity is that you don't believe in cause and effect. Excellent. That's why I've been buying you time for someone to finally take a chance and say the truth. Uh, stupid thoughts are the thoughts that are, uh, that, that, for example, uh, that deny cause and effect. Okay? If you really refuse to believe cause and effect, you're pretty, pretty stupid. It's very difficult to teach you. 
such people who says, I don't believe such a thing as cause and effect, it's very, it's just back off. It's, it's don't even try to teach them. It's just too, it's just too stupid. Leave it to the bodhisattvas and the Buddhas. We, you know, it's beyond us. Okay? Don't try to convert them. <clears throat> Tonight, I'm in a good mood, as you notice. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so understand now the three karmas, the karmas that you create. Karmas are the actions, your actions, not just anyone, just any action, your action. The things you, the, the offenses you will create with your mouth, your body, and your mind. Okay? Uh, so you can refrain from uh, the so you 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 learn uh, what are the three uh, karmas uh, that you tend to create, and actually the pratimoksha has detailed information specifically the certain types of tendencies pro proclivities. I'm throwing a different English term at uh, Shorty to just to confuse her. Proclivity. It's the same as tendency. Okay? Uh, so uh, you learn those three. So you guard against those errors because those are habit energies, by the way. We tend to commit those karmas, those offenses. When you guard against those such errors, then that means you are in a state of liberation, uh, meaning that you. Uh, so this is a concept that's kind of interesting for most people. Look at precepts as too restrictive, okay? And that's why I say, I don't want to study precepts because it doesn't make any sense for me. I don't like it. I don't like to be rest the restrictions. I, I value my freedom. Actually, if you study the precepts, you observe the precepts, you guard yourself against the three uh, from the three karma errors, the errors from the three karmas, then you're in a state of true liberation, not just freedom. Freedom for worldly people is called suffering, it's called creating offenses and suffering. Liberation here is free from restrictive factors, from fetters, if you will. So that's a Buddhist wisdom. It contrary to world and wisdom. Questions or comments? Because different kind of thinking, different kind of world. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Master. Booth. <laughs> Master, I didn't get the exact meaning of the pale face. So would you explain it again? <laughs> yes, of course. I'd be glad to. Feel free to ask, okay? Because first you non-American, uh, non-Vietnamese uh, people, uh, you can ask, or even you can ask, anyone can ask. Pale face. Here's what happens. The Indians are called red-skinned, yes? Because they live outside, they hunt outside, okay? And therefore, their skins are dark. Actually, uh, after a while, uh, these people actually, their skin has a tone of red. So that's why it's called red skin. Am I correct, uh, uh, pale face? Master, I'm yellow on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> but you still pale face. <laughs> okay, so the point here is that, oh God, we sound so discriminatory against the white people. This is not right. Okay, it's not even funny to them. It's funny to us. Look at you all laughing. It's, I'm not even laughing. I'm taking this very seriously. So, mm, so, so, so the white, the, the red people, the, the Indians here, American Indians, are dark skinned, more or less, have a red tone. Okay? Dark brown, if you will. Not like him. Uh, he's more yellow brown and dark brown. But anyway, mm, so they are called red skin. So when they, they dealt with the uh, immigrants, the white people, okay, they realized the white people's skin is so white. 
That's why they call them pale face, meaning that pale compared to my skin. Okay, so it, it means light skin color. So, does it help? No. So, yeah, I get it, but... Uh, the foundation? Yeah, what's the... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, I'm told for foundations, you know, because Asian uh, ladies like their skin to be white. Okay? So that they put on foundation to turn the skin lighter. That's called pale face. Kronde. <laughs> One more question. So, but the pale face is a what is the relation between pale face and stupidity? <laughs> okay, it's going to be a, take some time. Okay, guys, go have a coffee break. <laughs> you know, dinner or something. Let me explain to the Koreans. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be... Uh, okay, what does it have to do with... with, with uh, with stupidity? Yeah, go ahead, pale face. Um, I'll say something like I was raised around a lot of greed and anger and stupidity. So those are the three poisons and I grew up like that and I come in here and I unlearn it. So maybe that I'm just telling you like real life experience. No, the joke, the joke I was telling them is that in the old time in the West, in the West, in the cowboy area, the cowboy settlers you to go do business with the Indian people. Okay, so the Indians refer to the white people as pale faces. Okay, and so they call, the Indians call, the white people call the Indians redskins. It's derogatory, by the way. Redskin is derogatory, has a derogatory uh, meaning, connotation. So in return, the Indians call the white people pale face too, you know, that's why. So they're both looking down upon each other. Does it help? Okay. Come back. I'm, I'm done a lot sooner than I thought. <laughs> okay, break time over. Okay. Yellow face. <laughs> <clears throat> And anyway, uh, for, for, for it's not true nowadays because truth be told, now the Caucasian people look at uh, pale face here. He's more like pink face. So that's why it's, you cannot blame the Koreans for not understanding the joke anymore because the, the white people are no longer called, you cannot call them pink, uh, pale face, but you have to call them pink face now. You know, remember the last president? His pink face. Orange face. Yeah. <laughs> Don't complicate things for me. Question from JMT. I cannot believe we're discussing this in the midst of discussing a very profound prologue of the very profound sutra. JMT. 창백한 피부를 가진 사람은 가르칠 수 없는 대상이라고 말씀하셨는데 구체적인 예를 알고 싶습니다. The teacher says, the teacher says, how can you teach people, your students, to discriminate so much about pale faces and red faces and, and pink faces? Master, you told that um, you cannot teach pale face. So could you explain more specifically what kind of people you cannot teach? <laughs> okay. Break time again. Go, go, go. <laughs> okay. 
Someone help me out. Sinan, explain to me. <laughs> oh, God. So discriminatory, we're not supposed to discriminate. You're right. You are so right. Master is so wrong. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I've been accused of worse. <laughs> it's funny here, you know, it's funny because you're not in the United States. I'm an immigrant. So all immigrants who come here, we all experience some form of discrimination or, or, or you know, some form. You know, I was in college. I went to college here and uh, I had a fight with... Uh, with uh, with a uh, a, uh, a college student, uh, pale face, okay, and he says, <laughs> he says, uh, he says, go back to your country, you yellow face. Anyway, and so in the U.S., by for example, there's a lot of discrimination that's normal. It's not just a, uh, nothing in the U.S. that uh, people who are who are unenlightened, worldly people actually are discriminatory deep down. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, so this this is a, and I know I know we're talking in a light-hearted way about these issues, but that tells you that. Uh, you should look at yourself. We, we do have some discrimination, you know, uh, in our heart. Uh, they discriminate against uh, poor people, discriminate against uh, uneducated people, discriminate against pale faces, yellow faces, red faces, black faces, you know, all those. That's how we are wired. That's how we function. Okay, so Buddhism is that we recognize those thoughts of discrimination are the mind karmas, the thoughts of stupidity. Okay, discriminations are stupidity. Okay, thoughts of stupidity. So cut it out. There's nothing to be proud of. What happened is that worldly people, they enjoy it. You know, they, they crack jokes and make fun about pale faces, red faces, and so forth, red skins, and so forth. But they don't, they don't realize it's just, are just uh, uh, indulging in their own stupid thoughts. That's all. Okay? So Buddhism helps us realize that those are not necessary. And they are creating thought karmas. And therefore, uh, you are actually... With each thought of discrimination, each karma, uh, thought of karma, karma of thought, you actually are hurting yourself, no one else. All right, does it help? Okay, let's move on. I've never mentioned pale faces again. <clears throat> no one is laughing anymore. Okay. So, number nine, uh, Vinaya store also means natural goodness. Okay, Vinaya refers to your inherently good nature. Okay, you born good. Okay, and what happened? What happened? What happened is you draw near pale faces and you learn all the bad habits. And yellow faces, and all sorts of faces. My point here is that shame on you for discriminating against pale faces. Okay, if you don't. Uh, so what happened is that, seriously speaking, mm -hmm. we are inherently good. We born good. Look at the kids. Okay, look at the, how how innocent, how pure, how handsome they are. Remember that? Just look at a photo of you when you were younger. You notice, I notice the kids, when they're younger, they are so handsome, they're so pretty, aren't they? They're so cute, they're so lovely. When they get older, okay, they become less less uh, cute. Yes, one text your name. You have some personal experience? Uh, 
Ah, speaking of kids, I saw a kid running around and jewel conk. Okay? That's pin that kid down and take a close look at, at the face. Okay, I'm joking too much. Okay. So the point here is that inherently when we're born, we are, we are good. Our nature is good. And with social conditioning, you know, uh, my disciple said, my mom taught me to mistrust people, not to trust people. Sound familiar? Anyone has been taught that way? You cannot trust people. Okay? They will take advantage of you. Yes? I, as a teacher, because from experience as a student, know that students always try to steal and cheat you. I remember college days, uh, high school days, and so forth, cheated all, all my teachers. The great extent we went through here to cheat the professors and the teachers. Yes, seven. Sure. Master, I have a serious question about the great compassion and repentance. I'm always working on Sunday, and I can never get it off, so I've been practicing with the audio and the, the paper yes. a few times, yes. and I could tell a difference. So what would be good for me where I'm at right now with that? You cannot do Sundays? It's tough right now. but It's tough right now. Okay. The day off. It's your day off. And what you do, you can do a recording. Take a recording and go through that by yourself on your time off. Okay? That's going to help tremendously as well. Okay? It's better than doing by yourself. Okay? And when possible, try to, uh, to do it live in person. Okay? If possible. Okay? Or... Uh, on weekdays, we do have it right after lunch, 12.45 to 2, uh, 2.30. All right. Uh, okay. So, uh, so, so we're born inherently good. Number 10. <clears throat> Vinaya. Why is being taught? Why is such an important part of the Buddhist teaching? One of the three stores, okay? Also means guarding with faith. This is a very important concept, okay? Uh, uh, meaning that uh, uh, in the past, uh, you're able uh, to maintain it as received in the past. Meaning that in particular, for many of you, for most of you, actually, the overwhelming majority of you, the fact you're able to still come here and not be turned off by the jokes, by the lightheartedness, by the uh, clowning, okay, is because you heard of it before. Because typically, the Buddhist teaching, the Buddhist uh, Dharma master is very stiff, the very, the very formal, because they said the Dharma is such a, such a, sacred thing. We cannot joke around it. You cannot be lighthearted about it. So that's why typically a Dharma master is very, very formal, very, very serious, okay? Very little joking, okay? Master Shenhua is probably one of the more, um, how shall we say it, uh, the more relaxed teacher I've met. Most teachers take it very, very seriously. We're at the other extreme, you know, we are clowning around too much, okay? Uh, so, um, so it's only, uh, actually it's a very good way to shed the people who are too serious, okay? Uh, because it also goes to proof that, uh, that if you heard it before, that's why it doesn't offend you at all. If you heard it the first time, the first time that the, the the uh, Buddhist disciples who heard it for the first time, they expect something more formal, something more rigid, more adorned, if you will. 
Okay? So that's why this is a concept here. It says for you to be able, similar concept, for you to be able to maintain the precepts, maintain your purity, maintain your coolness, is because you have done it before in the past. Meaning that past performances matter. When you do right now, you're able to maintain and keep the precepts as much as possible right now, affects your ability to maintain it again in the future lives. It matters. And that's a concept. Okay? It's continuity. It's not just, you know, it's not just you, you, uh, you, uh, you enjoy yourself and uh, do, uh, live this life to the fullest and then forget it, it doesn't matter anyway. No, not at all. It's, there's, there's consequences, the continuity in your actions, in your blessings. Yes, sir. Three, two. Um, when, when do the children start committing offenses or start uh, going against karmas? Uh, to what age? Or it's immediately into the Immediately. Do yes. you remember you create karmas by the body, by the mouth and the mind? The children, okay, they begin to create karmas by the mind immediately. How? Because they learn it from us adults. They absorb everything like a sponge. Okay? I remember uh, in a family that I observe, I have a chance to observe how uh, the mother, okay, is very manipulative and the daughter pretty soon becomes to accept it as the norm and behaves in a manipulative, manipulative way as well. So the children, they, they learn so fast from us. They absorb everything from us. We don't need to say anything, we just behave. And be ourselves, they learn yeah, by observation. You don't need to teach them at all. You don't need to explain to them at all. Yes, five. From Christopher L. Master, I'm surprised at the response to the Q&A on your website that if you took the five precepts and you are a layman, why are you not allowed to date? Why would dating be a violation of the third precept? Why, why do I say that you cannot date? I never said you cannot date. You can date, but you cannot have sexual misconduct. That's all. I'm pretty sure I never explained it that way. Maybe uh, it's uh, a typo or something, but uh, that's, uh, that's not uh, part of the five precepts, okay? Five precepts is okay to date. It's just, Yes. I checked both uh, links that he's referring to, and you're correct. You did say that, but he said that to ask Master and you'll know what you'll understand. He said if you ask Master, he will understand. <laughs> but I think you're correct, Master. I know I'm correct. There's only one way to explain the precepts, There's only not two ways. Okay? Precepts are precepts. And when I explain the five precepts a little bit, uh, I'm very consistent because I know most of you don't understand the five precepts. Especially, I'm not talking about lay people, I'm talking about you, monks and nuns. That's why I'm very cautious, I'm very careful, very precise. Because one of my purposes of explaining these things is to help the monks and nuns understand better. Okay? Uh, because you need to spend the time to learn these things. And, and uh, that's why I'm encouraging you in the future, you have time. Uh, it's a very, very interesting. And to me, it's very useful because it's your foundation. The foundations of a happy life. Uh, this is Buddhist wisdom. Okay? Uh, so, no, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, uh, that I never explained that you cannot date. Of course you can date. Okay? Uh. Okay, so going back to slide number 10, uh, 
you're able to maintain the precepts. It's a very interesting concept here because uh, able, if you received in the past and you're able to observe the precepts, and therefore now uh, you can continue that effortlessly. And on the, on the other hand, if you receive the precepts and you, and you fail, you consistently violate the precepts, then in the future, okay, you still violate the precepts. 11. Mm -hmm. So, in summary, the Vinaya store uh, refers to uh, two major things. Okay? Priority number one is to stop the evil side of your nature. Your, your nature, your, your makeup has an evil side that compels you, makes it compelling for you to violate the rules and regulations. Huh? It's exciting it, to you. It's fun. Yes, to, to worldly people, it's, they call it freedom, they call it uh, fun, they call it whatever, like all sorts of names, okay, all sorts of terms. Uh, but uh, it's this evil nature of ours that enjoys it. Okay, I know uh, the particular nun who really enjoys, uh, she has money, but she enjoys uh, getting you to donate money to her. And she lies through her teeth to get, just to get you to do that. She's fascinated by that. It's so interesting. She doesn't need money. She doesn't care for money, as a matter of fact. But she enjoys, she enjoys uh, saying things and doing things to get you to give her money. That's it. It's her, it's her, it's her fun. Yes, five. From Alex, I understand the Prakti Moksha vows as the vows monks and nuns take. They include things like not doing business of any kind and not doing labor that earns a wage. How should lay people understand and use them as a lay Buddhist? They are not your precepts. Those are the monks' precepts. You don't need to worry about them. They're called monk precepts because they're precepts for monks. They're not for you. So don't worry about it. Okay, but for the, as far as the monks and nuns are concerned, you are correct. The monks and nuns are not supposed to have a job. The monks and nuns are not supposed to engage in making money, in trade to make money. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and for good reasons, because they will be in the way of their becoming peer, their remaining peer, and their becoming enlightened. Okay? And not only for themselves, but imagine you're a monk, a nun, and you work for someone, and your boss uh, scolds you. Uh, they're scolding the Sangha. They're creating serious offenses. Okay? It's very damaging for the bosses, for your co-workers who have thoughts of irreverence, of lack of respect towards you as a monk and nun because you're a co-worker, okay? They disagree, disagree with you at work, and they have these thoughts of, uh, these uh, negative thoughts about you. They're, they're creating serious offenses that makes, make it very hard for them in the future to draw near Buddhism, let alone Mahayana. Okay? Uh, so, for example, uh, you, uh, you, you have, uh, you, uh, you disrespectful towards the Sangha, for example, in the future, uh, you have a great difficulties in finding monks and nuns who are willing to teach you. Those who are willing to teach you actually are not good monks and nuns. They're trying to take advantage of you. That's why they're willing to teach you. But if the good monks and nuns, if you're not respectful towards them, 
You yell at them, you scold them, like at work, okay, from at work. Uh, and then in the future, uh, you will have a hard time learning from the, I mean, learning the good Buddha Dharma, if you will. Okay, so yes, that's why we uh, prefer that you don't have a job. Okay, what about having a job for at the temple, getting paid by the temple? Sure, you can do that too, uh, but then it has a, a drawback of you worrying about making money, and that's uh, not uh, a healthy state of mind. Uh, when the mind thinks of dirty things like money, the, the Chinese, especially Master Shen Hua, is very blunt about it. They said money is dirty. You think about making money, you're thinking of filthy things. Okay? And therefore, uh, it's in conflict, in contradiction to the pure lifestyle that you're supposed to do. When you shave your head, you're supposed to distance yourself from such worldly concerns. Okay. All right, so you stop evil, meaning that mm, you refrain, you put a check on your evil tendencies. Okay. The precepts are, are the boundaries, if you will, that between the evil and the good. So when you go near the boundary, you realize, oh, that's a precept, such a precept, creates that boundary, you don't want to cross it. So far, so good. So you stop yourself from crossing the boundaries to the other side. So it's very useful, okay? Uh, and to me, it's such a practical thing because I used to wander around. I didn't have a temple. I didn't have a teacher. So I used to wander around going to temple to temple, places to places, and I realize it's a very dangerous thing. I got beaten up more and more times I care to re I, that I could remember, I care to tell you. It's just very dangerous when you cross certain boundaries, okay? Mm -hmm. Boundaries of our good, our good side versus their, the competition, the evil side. You cross the boundaries, they will attack you. They will give you a hard time. They will try to harm you, okay? Uh, so that's why uh, there, these precepts are very, very, very important in a passive way. You stay away from the bad area, or dangerous areas, okay? Yeah. So you're stopping evil uh, uh, not only for yourself, but also the evil side of, of others as well by staying away, okay? Mm. And the second part of, uh, is one is stopping, the other is doing. Stopping evil and doing good, okay? You're doing good. Your precept is not just stopping the evil in you, but also precepts encourage you to do the good things, to create good karmas, if you will. That's what precepts are about. Okay? Meaning that you should recognize very important for you to recognize if it's a good thing, you should do them. That's the teaching of the precepts. When it's an evil thing, stop it. If it's a good thing, do more of it. Do more and more and more of it when you still have a chance. That's precepts. Is it clear? So precept is not actually, actually um, passive. Precepts are also very proactive. If you can benefit others, okay, then you should. That's what is called doing good. Twelve. The third store is called the Abhidharma store, uh, or uh, the uh, Sanskrit word is Shastras, Shastor, Shast Shastras. Abhidharma here, uh, also Sanskrit, also uh, can be broken down. Abhi is pair, Dharma is Buddha Dharma. Uh, pair Dharma meaning that mm, if you look at the three stores, uh, you can pair the Shasa store with the other two. 
meaning what? Uh, meaning that if you practice Chan, okay, uh, then uh, you need to pair it with the Shastra because Chan will bring you Shastra is a teaching of wisdom. So Chan will be paired with uh, the Abhidharma. Uh, okay? uh, whereas when you practice precepts, you also uh, need to pair with wisdom as well. Why? Because when you uh, practice purity, you practice uh, the Prati Moksha, okay, then you open your wisdom so that you uh, have the clarity of mind and you know uh, how to be, how to protect yourself, to talk, stop doing evil, and how to do more good. Go ahead, Jewel Conk. To stop the evil, we have to recognize our evil. How can I recognize evil? Good question. How do you recognize evil? Number one, uh, instinctively, you know that you should not. So your instinct tells you that uh, it's wrong. If you are of the mindset that I don't want to do evil, okay, so you start with that, when you're about to do something, instinctively you know okay, that it's not right. So your instinct knows. Your instinct uh, has its own wisdom. And more specifically, mm. number two, how do you know what's evil? You study precepts. You study what the five precepts mean, the ten precepts mean, uh, bhikshu precepts, um, bodhisattva precepts, uh, bhikshuni precepts, uh, and so forth. So the precepts are actually called precept marks. They actually they, uh, describe in great details mm, about uh, what's evil, what's wrong. That's how you know. So that's why in Buddhism, traditionally, we put a lot of emphasis. They used to put a lot of emphasis on learning the precepts, but it's not being done anymore because monks and nuns don't understand it, and uh, lay people are not interested anymore. But, but they only fail to um, build the proper foundation for their cultivation, for their uh, becoming enlightened a lot quicker. Okay? So you have to pay attention. No, you have to learn about the precept marks the description of the characteristics of the precepts, if you will. So, for example, the marks of the five precepts are no killing, no stealing, no deviant uh, uh, sex, no lying, no taking intoxicants, and then furthermore, you can go into greater details as well. All right? So avoid those. Hmm. All right, Abhi is paired, okay, uh, because it comes, uh, it, it, uh, it uh, paired up with the other teachings. And the Dharma refers to Buddha Dharma. Mm. Uh, Buddha Dharma uh, is taught in, in, two, in two types, general types, Supreme Dharma or Marx Dharma. Uh, supreme Dharma meaning that the ultimate, uh, the ultimate uh, knowledge that you will have when you become enlightened, or the marks meaning that the Dharma that can be described, the Dharmas that can be uh, taught to help us in our cultivation. Okay, marks meaning that can be observed with, can be perceived 
by your sense organs, by your ears, by your eyes, by your mouth, and so forth. Okay? Mm. Yeah. And so the Dharma, Buddha Dharma marks refers to the marks of evil, the mark of good, the mark of sagely. Okay? So you learn how to recognize those things. I, for example, uh, when I first learned the Buddha Dharma, mm, my master died very quickly. So I had to go through his teaching uh, when I read everything that it was translated into English. Uh, and then further did further research in Chinese uh, dictionaries and Chinese uh, uh, teachings from Chinese sages. And so I learned to recognize, for example, and I, this is for all of you, okay, uh, the marks. What is the marks of first dhyana? What are the marks of second dhyana, third dhyana, fourth dhyana, and so forth, okay? So that's how you look at a person, you see, you look at, never mind whether you can see them or not, but you can see their behavior. The first dhyana has certain behavior. Uh, second dhyana has certain behavior and so forth. That's how you can recognize people, okay? So I learned, so the marks, my point is the mark is very useful, okay? It's very precise information, you will. It's fantastic. It's a special knowledge that give you an edge, uh, this, this unique knowledge uh, that worldly people, worldly knowledge doesn't have access to. And then you learn about the marks, then you, you verify it. So the last 16 years, I watch people and say, oh, you are so-and-so. And then, and then I ask them, uh, how do you feel? So they start talking and say, oh, that confirms the marks again. So it's verified. You learn the marks, and you, by teaching, you learn to verify those marks, ascertain, ascertain those marks, if you will. So the Buddha, uh, Buddha Dharma is also, uh, also uh, gives us a lot of uh, secret information, you will, about the marks of uh, uh, not only about the small things here, but the marks like in the Avatamsaka, the marks of the Bodhisattva, the marks of the rest of the universe. That's what the Avatamsaka Sutra uh, specializes in doing. Okay, and gives us that teaching about the marks of the universe, the entire universe is fascinating. Okay, and this wisdom here is, is, uh, is called Vajra seats because those marks there uh, are uh, the truth about our universe, if you will. That's really superior knowledge. Hmm? Hmm. 13. Hmm. So when you talk about stores, the store can be categorized as exclusive, meaning you separate them, uh, the three studies of sutra, of vinaya, and uh, the precepts, okay? And so, uh, so the exclusive, because there's, they're, they're specialized, a specialty sutra specializes in the study uh, of, uh, of, um, of samadhi, uh, uh, vinaya studies of morality, and the shastras or abhidharma, the study of wisdom. So they are, they are, uh, they are exclusively uh, separated. The different boundaries. Uh, why is there a movement? From Jewel Mountain Temple, it seems like. Are we being photobombed, video bombed? Chongosu님, temple view 좀 보세요. Okay, so the stores are different. Uh, they're exclusively separated. They have their own 
uh, domains. Uh, uh, or you could look at the stores as part of the whole, uh, the united, okay? Uh, meaning that um, you cannot really separate them at all. They are part of the whole thing called the Buddhist teaching. And one, see, what happened? Oh, they probably, the, the webcam fell off and the saw its wing. Pale faces. Yes, five. From Christopher L. Master, how do you recognize the marks of a sage? How do you recognize the mark of a sage? When you become a sage, I will teach you. Okay. Uh, they are unite, uh, exclusive, they are separate, segregated, or they are, they are part of the big whole called Buddhism because you cannot separate, for example, samadhis from morality. Samadhi moralities are one. So it's a different description, different angles, if you will, of the same whole, okay? You look at the whole, well, depending on your perspective, you can see so much, it's called Vinaya. You move the other way around, you see so much, it's called Samadhi. You, leave, you move again, you see this thing, this thing called, called uh, wisdom. Well, actually, it's a whole thing. You cannot separate them. When you have no wisdom, we need to separate them for you. When you, have, when you are enlightened, you have true wisdom, then you see them as a whole. There's no, no difference at all. Okay? And, and this is one thing, a caveat for all of you. Uh, I, we give you, Master Shenhua and I, give you shortcuts for you to become enlightened, but it's only to, for you to choose in the future to look at the whole. Don't. Don't you, you cannot look at them as uh, separate at all, as exclusive at all, okay? So depending on your level of wisdom, you have the high level of wisdom, then the one, one only. If you have low level, then you look at them as separate. You need to separate them, if you will. So far, so good? Hmm. All right. I still have more time to... Uh, till 10 o'clock, okay? Mm. Or uh, you can uh, explain uh, as uh, uh, the Buddha Dharma has only two stores. Before we look at the Buddha Dharma, it's three stores. Pre, uh, sutras, uh, Abhidharma, and uh, Pratimoksha, three stores. Uh, samadhi, the study of Samadhi, wisdom, and the precepts of morality. Or you can look at from a resource perspective. Okay, you look at, if you look at all the Buddhist teaching, you can classify them as two stores only. Mm. Uh, the previous uh, three stores illustrate principle, practices, and fruitions. Okay. Uh, mm. But the two stores here refers to the sound hearer store meaning that uh, you hear the Buddha's uh, uh, sermons and you become enlightened, like this. Or uh, you can, uh, uh, you become enlightened by two different uh, level attainments, by the four noble truths or the 12 condition links. The 12 condition links will bring you to practice Buddhahood wisdom, and the four noble truths will bring you to our hardship. Okay, so those are the sound hearer stores. The sound hearer stores have the teachings uh, that uh, help you uh, choose, uh, give you a choice to practice either uh, becoming an arhat or pratyeka Buddha. Okay, so those are these special uh, store teaching that we have for called sound hearer store. Or you can uh, classify the Buddhist, the Buddha Dharma as uh, uh, the another store called Bodhisattva store. Okay, Bodhisattva stores refers to um, the 
teachings of the paramitas, in particular uh, for most of the people of the world, you can call them the six paramitas, which uh, includes all the paramitas, or you want to be more detailed, okay, you can talk about the ten paramitas, okay, as the teachings about the Bodhisattva store, okay? Hmm. Okay, now, oh God, let's uh, see, Master Ching Liang is very, very detailed, very scholarly. And uh, please don't be alarmed. You should listen to it and uh, just listen. And if you understand, fine. You don't understand, it's okay too. It's important to just to listen. Okay, now, uh, the, when you talk about the sound here store, we talk about the four fruits of our hardship. The first stage, our heart, second stage, third stage, and fourth stage. Fourth stage is, is, is uh, by convention called our heart. Low levels, we specify this stage. So fourth stage is simply in our heart. Low level, we say second stage, or third, or first, okay, for a reason, okay? Mm. Just for your information, uh, this is... Uh, just for your information, and there's more. Uh, as you practice, you get closer and closer, and you see. Uh, first is hardship, and you have what is called wisdom, beginning of wisdom, meaning that your thinking is not as confused as before, as stupid as before. Your spirit is stupid, but it's not as stupid. Okay? Uh, why? Mm. Because you, when you certify the first stage, our hardship is called Shrota Apana, okay, that's a Sanskrit word, uh, you're able to sever according to the Tian Tai teaching, 88 view delusions, delusions. What are view delusions? View delusions are uh, when you face with a state, when you see something, you perceive something, you give rise to greed and love. For example, you see a red car, you say, I want it. That's called. Why is that called? Greed. What is it called? Desire greed or view delusion, not stupidity. Please. Let's be civil. <laughs> it's, it's view delusion. Okay, so view delusions, we perceive something. We hear music and say, oh, I love this. Okay, or you go to a French restaurant, you have some French bread and butter. And you say, oh, this is so nice. What is that called? View delusion. Yes, c'est bon. Master, when, when uh, you reach that level of attainment, then you can just see something and just drop, drop the desire or the thought or whatever. It doesn't even affect you then. Exactly. What happened is that when you reach first stage aha, either you destroyed it already or you haven't. You still have some view delusions left. But the difference is that if you still have some delusions left, let's say you still want red cars, When you're given a red car, then you can sell it very quickly. <laughs> See, then you still have wisdom. But you have a red car, and you, you say, oh, I love my red car. Okay? I love to drive it around. Then you are no sage. So, we see what happens okay, when you get a red car. So, the point here is that it's not talk, folks. It's about how you behave. Is that clear? Is he talk is cheap. You can talk, oh, I'm, I'm not interested. Yeah. 
until, until, until you inhale and say, oh, this is nice. Yeah, and so forth. So, view delusions, important concept today for you, okay? View delusions, when you see something, when you hear something, you give rise to thoughts of greed and love. Is that clear? Please memorize it. This is important for you. No one is taking notes anymore. This is disgusting. I took the time to, to you know, specifically tell them, you know, please memorize, please remember. They say, okay, and they drop it immediately. Because why? It's viewed illusion. <laughs> okay? Because if you write it, stop writing! Could you write it? Then you are subject to viewed illusions. You fail the test again. You understand? If I told you, please remember, and you, <laughs> then you're greedy. So that's why you should do like we do in the United States. When Master says, you remember it? Uh-huh, and you drop it. Okay, but remember this definition. Uh, when you face something with a state, you give rise to greed and love. That's very important for your future reference. So far, so good. Don't worry about the 88 view delusion. That's too complicated. It doesn't matter. Okay, we're not gonna break, make you remember, memorize 88 view delusions. That's nonsense. Okay, this is what Master Tutor and the Tian Tai people, they said, I can classify view delusion into 88 different types. Nonsense. Too much. Who's going to remember? Okay? Yeah. Don't worry. But you need to remember, only I need to remember is that whatever it is, if you see something, you hear something, you taste something, okay, you touch something, you say, I like this. Okay? That's a view delusion. Is that clear? So far, so good. This is how you test yourself. The people, you know, the worldly people say, I know, I, you know, I'm smart, I'm enlightened, but they have so many view delusions, meaning they can't even qualify to be the first level of transcendental wisdom as far as you are concerned. They're not even the first stage, oh, and they, they classify themselves as sages having wisdom. Is that clear? The first stage, ah, have special wisdom that uh, people in the world don't have. That's why they're special. That's why the Hinayana people, the Hinayana Buddhists call them as sages. There's a reason for that. In Mahayana, we don't, we don't consider them to be sages because there's so much more uh, in terms of wisdom. So we look at that. We don't look at the first stage ahat. It's too low as far as wisdom, words wisdom is concerned in Mahayana, so that's why you don't classify them as sages at all, okay? But actually, they're very special, uh, very outstanding people in society, if you will, okay? Because they severed uh, uh, greed and love when faced with a state. You understand? Faced with a state, whatever you do, whatever happens, okay, around you, you look at it, that's a state, okay? And you give rise to thoughts of love and greed. Okay? What about loving your daughter? Is that a view delusion? Loving your Husband, is that a view delusion? Go for us. Loving your wife, is that a view delusion? Do it. You see there? Okay, 
Let's keep it simple because we, it looks like go force people are not engaging. What about taking a drink of booze and liking it? Is that view delusion? Yes, absolutely. Okay? Yeah. So the answer is yes to all my questions. That's a view delusion. The first stage, aha, they can drop it. They can drop their wives. They can drop their husband. They can drop their whatever. They can drop their dread cars. They can drop whatever. They can sell the poor tea. Huh? They can sell anything. Yeah. They can get rid of anything. Okay? Yeah. Number two, second sage Ahad. Isn't it interesting? You like this or you want me to? Oh, it's time is up. Sorry. I'm not toying with you. You know, it's 10 o'clock. There's rules here. Okay? Yeah. We stop here tonight. Okay, we need to do rebirth transference. Okay? So we continue next time. Thank you, everyone. Okay, let's do rebirth transference.